You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Well, hello out there and welcome to another awesome episode of Vigilantes Radio. I'm your host, Denny Mussolini, and we have a very, very special guest for uh, this evening's segment. So you should definitely stick around for that. Oh, yeah. So think for a moment, um, not about what is happening to you today, but rather about what you have chosen for today. Most of the of the external things will go right along no matter how you react to them. Your choices, not your circumstances, are what will determine the quality of this day and of your life. You can choose to pursue the great opportunities which are in front of you. You can choose to make progress in spite of the difficulties which control you and the obstacles that stand in your way. Oh man, how many of us have obstacles that just seem to come out of nowhere? And then once you over one, here comes another. It's like, yo, give me time to get over the first one first, you know? Hey, but uh, you can choose to make a difference. You can choose to be effective. There are plenty of excuses not to. It's all too easy to give in to the seemingly uh, overwhelming circumstances, yet you always have another path. You can choose the quality and the outcome of this day by the actions you decide to take. It's your choice, guys. Choose to make it a great and successful day. Take that from me, Denny Mussolini. Uh, that is my word, and word is bond. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, hello and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Music or Inside the Book, Inside the Business, where we dive into the minds of the people who create marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. So one time, one time for my people who are indigos, crystalline or star seeds, or for my vigilantes audience family. And two times for my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're like me, we are averaging over 37,000 live listeners, and we've been at this for four solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey, and we are still evolving, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality, business, literature, art, movies, and research in every aspect, and we want to allow you an opportunity opportunity to tell your story man we've had celebrities on our show from grammy award winning artists to nominees to actors comedians ceos technology geniuses visual artists from authors to professors and aliens or people think they're aliens it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from come on our show and talk to me so check it out to book your interview or just to share a real cool story email me at v radio at only one media group.com and that's v as in victor i'm passionate about what i do just as passionate about what you do and together Yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. You know the number to dial. 701-801-9813. 
text that number to your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests or you can hop in the mix directly from our website only one mediagroup.com right from the home page you can slap that go live button and you'll be right here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here but only as time permits sometimes my guests and i talk entirely too much and we take up the entire hour and as always all episodes are available for free download and you can grab that from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube or any app from the google play or itunes store or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we ever aired Okay, guys, welcome to the show again. Uh, tonight's interview is uh, the Kathy Murphy interview. And again, I'm your host, Denny Mussolini. Man, that uh, the intro music kind of pumps me up. Like, I don't know, I'm a wrestling fan, so I, I figure like at the end of the music, like some just fireworks, uh, pyrotechniques, you know, just start going off and uh, maybe, no? Okay. It's not that's not good for the studio so anyway a kid can dream but anyway our interviews go beyond the music the blogs the books the businesses the movies and into the minds of the people who create it from researching our special guests minor for details and listening reading or watching everything we can our interviews are designed to bring out the best answers possible we're like tmz catching you in awkward moments uh not really but uh we have provoking questions that have real substance Maybe not like TMZ, no shade involved. We're just trying to exist amongst the media giants, right? Our guest today is none other than Kathy Murphy, a coach, an inspirational speaker, an author, singer, songwriter, and Wonder Woman. And sorry if I just gave away your identity, but it seems like she's Wonder Woman. All those hats and all those talents and things that she pumps into the earth to get you guys motivated to live your best life, you know? I like that especially. Well, with that, guys, let's go ahead and welcome her to our show. Hey, Kathy, you're now live in the mix with all of us. How's it going? Hey, Demi Mussolini, you got it going on, man. You are alive <laughs> and on fire. I like your show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so happy to be here playing with you tonight. What a yeah. gift. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. 2020, we are here. How are you feeling about the uh, the new year? I, I am doing great. It's a new year, a new day, a new moment. Every time we all, you guys, no matter what the hell we're going through, no matter how many times we're knocked out, we get to start over. And that right. is so amazing for us all, just like you said. So I always look forward to a new year and every moment I get is a blessing. Most definitely. I totally agree. Every day is a new start, a new uh, chance to start over and uh, kind of, you know, progress, keep moving forward. Yeah. We get a clean slate. It's like yeah. the rising tide. The yeah. name uh, of my movement and new name of my business, because every time the tide comes in, it washes away what's there and brings nourishment to everything around. And we are so like the rising tide in that when one of us rises with the tide, we all rise. And it's time for you guys, for all of us to get together and rise this tide. So right. one night it came to me and I knew it had to like be a movement I was gonna create to help, especially women, redefine empowerment because I found in my 64 years of life and purpose-driven work that what we're doing is killing us. Yeah. The world is filled with stressed out, burned out, worried, overthinking, struggling people, trying hard to fix themselves so they can be who they think they need to be and live life the way they need to fit in. Most definitely. And I know you see it too, Demi, and the rising tide is to help us all take a step back and look inside this time, because that's where true empowerment begins. That's right. When we can see who we really are and how life really works. That's right. Yeah. Everyone is able to find their truth with a capital T, and when they see it for themselves, everything shifts 
They look at the world and instead ask, oh, how shall I live? Mm -hmm. Not how should I be, but how do I wish to be? And what do I wish to see and create in the world? And it creates powerful, courageous, confident, connected people who can model and help all others rise as well. Because when we create our own life, we model to others ways they can create their life and follow their dream. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, and going back to uh, the rising tide, I was looking at your Instagram and um, something important stood out to me, how you can write something in the sand like uh, worries or stress, all kind of problems. You can write that in the sand and something amazing happens with the uh, the magnetic poles of this earth or something like that. I wasn't really paying too much in, in science class as a kid, but mm -hmm. for some reason, the tide comes each and every day and washes away whatever it was that was on the sand whether it's you know uh let's just say the things you write in the sand the things you write in your mind as as you go throughout the day there's a new day coming and you know that amazing thing happens and just washes that away so you have a chance to redo it or um take another step forward so uh, i kind of admire that about your company the rising tide because that's so important analogy or metaphor uh, for our lives and how we don't really have to stay there in those moments of chaos and problems and just everyday obstacles that come our way. So definitely right. commend you for that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And like you said in the beginning, the circumstances are always changing and yeah. our experience that I'll get into in a minute is always changing as well based on that. And the reason that, I mean, I'm, I'm a surfer, so I love, the ocean and the tide and feel so connected there as part of that energy and the tides occur because of the relationship between the moon and the sun and the magnetic pull and that magnetic pull is strong enough to pull the ocean that far sometimes up to like 30 feet in major tides yeah. and that magnetic pull and energy is the same energy alive in the center of all of us. We're created from that same energy. And we have that capacity to be magnetic the same way the tide is. Right. All right. So that's, that's kind of why I came up with that analogy um, yeah. in that way. And that's it just great. was a natural progression as part of being a coach, um, I kind of I coached others all my life, and I always loved helping them get outside their comfort zone, do something they never thought they could. I was the one that took people to do shit they thought was crazy. They were like, yeah. "Oh no way!" and they would go with me and do it, and they would feel comfortable, and they would fall in love with it. Yeah. And I coached teams all my life in my career in sports. And everywhere I showed up, I seemed to have this contagious kind of energy that got inside of people, both on the outside and on the inside. And I could see potential in everyone I've met in life. Yeah. And I was blessed enough to help them see what they could not in terms of choice and possibility. I did it as a supervisor. I did it as a manager in my previous career. But what I loved most then and I love most as a kid, and I still love most today, is watching people fill with that aliveness mm -hmm. that you can see in them when they just truly, we're all alive because we're here and we're breathing. But it's about body, mind, and spirit. It's about full aliveness. Being, playing full out every day and being engaged in life is what brings aliveness, regardless of what you're going through. And right. when I see that and people move through something they thought was a fear into a place of sheer joy, it, it just lights me up and lights up everyone else in their life as well. So mm -hmm. speaking and coaching was one way to do that. And now I want it to spread even more and create more of an impact because I see the difference that it can make in how people experience 
everything, all of it. What we look at as the good, the bad, the ugly, the sucky days, all of it is really meant to be experienced while we're here. Yeah, yeah. Shapes us who we are. Uh, but I want to go back, and uh, I guess we could start here. Um, your history and how leadership skills became a seed that grew into you know your personality now how you're able to lead and motivate people and coach people and show them the way like where did that seed that grain start with you i think that grain came with me when i was placed on earth Hmm. in a human body of form from the infinite whatever you choose to call it to a family who could not have children and boy, did they get a handful. <laughs> um, I think that I came out pretty much um, very alive and probably did a lot of fighting to get here. Both my mom and I almost died at birth also. Not only did oh. they not have kids, but we almost didn't make it. And throughout my life, I always ask why. Why is it like that? Like, I never saw people as being any different than each other. We were all the same. Didn't matter what people looked like. Didn't matter what group they hung out in. Didn't matter what they did or did not do. I never saw them as different. I saw us all the same. And I saw so much available for people that they couldn't see. And I just loved helping them see what they couldn't see. Got me in a lot of trouble as a kid. Like I went to Catholic school where they would smack you with a ruler. Hmm. And I had to sit up by the teacher because if the, if the nuns would, like, be picking on a kid about something and the kid couldn't stand up for themselves, I'd stand up for them. Yeah. And help them to see how they did not need to be treated like that. Um, and so I just love bringing people together and getting them connected throughout my life. Um, I did it. Like I said, when I first came in, I did it throughout my life, coaching teams, and then I became a supervisor. And when I became a supervisor, people wanted to work for me because they saw that the people who came to work for me were doing things that all their other supervisors had told them they would never be able to do and they weren't worth anything. Hmm. And then I, I coached people to become managers. And I created, um, in the the last nine years of my career, I managed off-road parks in Southern California. And I created some of the largest recreation in the world in a place where there was major conflict between people and their, their needs of what they thought was right, what they thought the other people couldn't do, and I brought together like Native Americans, the Sierra Club, the Center for Biodiversity, the off-road community, just major diverse groups together for us to find a way for everyone to be able to do what they love. Together we were stronger, connected we were stronger, and we totally changed the face of the Southern California deserts doing that. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like what I had done when I was younger, just in a different way. And the ways that we were able to do things when I was a leader then was, you know, I worked for a bureaucracy and a very political agency. And yet I was still able to do things that to this day, people just shake their head and go, I don't know how she did that. I Hmm. I don't know how she did that. (laughs) And it was from that passionate place. um, And that has something to do with my story of what got me where I am today. Because at one point, um, October 7th, 2012, to be exact, I found myself surrounded by armed men. And I didn't work in a bank. I didn't work in a convenience store. But I was being told to not move, um, Mm. put my hands in the air, got handcuffed, went with them to my house where... I was told not to leave and isolated from everything. That was a point where I literally lost or had lost before that point. Pretty much all of me, my physical energy was gone. Doctors said I shouldn't be alive. I'd been through cancer, Lyme disease, rheumatoid arthritis. I'd taken care of both my parents before they passed. I went through a long divorce from a marriage. Um, Just 
a lot of those, when you talk about circumstance and knock on the head, I'd gotten a lot of those knocks. Physically, mentally, and emotionally, I had zero energy left. And what had driven me, because keep in mind, I was working 20 out of 24 hours a day. What had driven me was my spiritual energy, which is the only one we cannot run out of. Because when we tap into that, it's infinite. That drove me past any kind of physical pain, physical illness, physical injuries, like everything that occurred, I was able to keep going on that because I was so passionate about what I saw people needed and what was being brought to the world with us all working together on it and everyone being their best. Because I believe we all do our best every day regardless of what that looks like, it is the best we can do and that's why we do it. And that day I knew like I was going to recreate my life and the journey to do that helped me to learn more about how I can help other people do it. And of course, you know, those knocks come off and and then a couple of years later as I had gotten back into everything, including surfing, I got hit on the head with my board, knocked out, and oh. um, was under the water, swallowing water, and couldn't get to my board. So oh. when something from an invisible source, I believe was my mom, lifted me on the board and laid me there, and a friend mm. got me to shore, I knew there was more plans for my life. Yeah. I believe we don't have one purpose. We have many purposes. People spend a lot of time trying to figure out, what's my purpose? Like yeah, today, yeah. it may be one thing today, tomorrow it may be another. And that's another part of the beauty. Like you get as many as you want of all of that stuff. Purpose, passion, something you feel strongly about, you go for it. Take a step towards it. So I think all of those things combined help me become a powerful self-leader in combination with God in the universe is what I call it, and Mm -hmm. to self-lead in the things that I needed to self-lead, not just in the things that the messages I got from outside saying, you know, be empowered, be strong. Yeah, I did. I was one of the first firefighters, one of the first police officers, but it was more than that because I knew I was always guided, and then fast forward to a year ago. that I have some other questions here you were going to ask me about about that timing but during that time the thing that I discovered that has had the biggest impact on me is the science of the mind how mind consciousness and thought really work together because when I started as a coach I would coach people on a problem and then I would help them with the strategy to work with it and then I got more into how our thoughts are what we create And so I help people try to change their thought. And then this past year, I not only learned and understood and saw the science of it, but saw for myself, had insight, which is the thing that changes us for good, had insight into how the mind works and how it's all our thinking that creates our thoughts. So now, instead of helping people with just an individual problem, I point them towards what I had said before, our true nature. Mm-hmm. That's the place we lead from. Our true power, the infinite potential that's available for everybody, the infinite creativity, the infinite genius that's there that takes in all the wisdom that came before us in everybody's mind and in that mind of the greater energy. And in that space, we can lead and create from the heart because that's where the intuition is. When we're thinking too much, we're out of our head, we're out of our heart, and we're in our head. And we've got to get out of our head and back into our heart because the heart is where the GPS is. The heart is what knows and will self-correct. But when we try to plan for it all, when we try to figure it all out ahead of time in our head, Mm -hmm. we are limiting choice and possibility for us And choice and possibility for really as big of a scale as solving world problems. Because we're not, we don't, we don't have the ability ourselves. We can't do it alone. So the whole empowerment thing 
became intertwined and with the rising tide, I thought to myself, you know, when they told us we had to do it all ourselves, we lost that connection yeah. between who we think we are and who we really are. We lost that connection between ourselves and others, seeing us as the same thing. It doesn't matter what we look like that's different. I just did a video on, uh, it's called Dear Human, and it's signed off, Love God. Mm. And it talks about, you know, I made you different because the world would be boring if you weren't. Mm -hmm. And I didn't make you different so that you felt less than anybody else. And perhaps I didn't stress enough that the most important part is that place you're all the same and you're all connected. And we lost sight of that along the path. And that's yeah. one of the things that I see that when I help people open their own eyes to that in their way, I work mostly with uh, business owners who are struggling with their business because they're big dreamers, women are creators. Um, it's like they already have this vision but they're trying to do it the way they think they have to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's no one size fits all anything. There isn't even a one size fits all business plan. There's a no right. one size fits all best business practice. And even our own, our own way of doing things is that what we know to do right now is what we need to do. If we don't know, and we or we know and we go oh okay so every time I want to do something I have to do it this way no because we get wisdom in the moment like the GPS when we're driving when you're driving with the GPS you don't need to know ahead am I gonna have to turn here or there one they haven't calculated for traffic yet till you get there and it's the same with life and when we don't follow it it's self-correct doesn't judge us, doesn't do anything, just says, oh, you know what? Make a U-turn. Let's go back. Go this way. Go that way. And our path unfolds so beautifully when we allow it to do that. Yes. Totally. So I got yeah. way off track from what, oh, what no. questions you You're sent good because <laughs> you're crossing out some questions I'm already sorry. had. You're real good at this, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> I'm, I'm posing things. I'm like, okay, wait. I'm trying to answer his questions, but he didn't exactly answer the question, so I'm giving a different <laughs> answer, but it's all good because whatever it is, you and I got this, and it's what whoever's going to listen to this wants to and needs to hear. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so you, you let, spent some let time. Me look, so. All right. You're also okay. a published author. Um, how did you get into that? I am. One year ago, I had never written a book or a song, and I had no clue how you would even start. Mm. I thought about it, you know, have any of you guys ever had that? Oh, someday I think I'll write a book. Yeah. And someday, you guys, starts today with one step. So I didn't have a someday plan, because it's someday, that's how we look at things, just by conditioning. And I never thought of myself as an author or a songwriter, singer. Um, I love to write all my life, and I love to sing, and I love music, but now I'm both. And it reinforced my message to the world that at any moment, we're just one thought away from creating what we want, recreating our life journey, being someone we weren't the day before. And anything is possible for anyone because it's never too late. Yeah, and yeah. how this came about and that journey began one night I was on my computer and I saw a coaching program come up by a coach, Michael Neal, whose book, The Inside Out Revolution, I had read a couple months prior. And I looked and this course was called Creating Them Possible. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm all in. I love doing things that you can't do. Mm. And it start, was starting the next day. And I was like, okay, I'm signing up. You know, it's one of those things where you're guided to something it just pops into your head or it pops up on your computer out of nowhere what do you do you go with it so I signed up and I knew also I was thinking you know I created what people always told me wasn't possible and I never saw it as impossible but how can I better help other people do the same thing because I had been doing it in my coaching and even other coaches were like oh my gosh you can't like set those kind of goals to co-create with clients I'm like 
yeah, but you guys, this shit works. I don't know how, but it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so I wanted to bring a book to the world written by my dog because it didn't even need to come to me. I just wanted it in the world. And the title I came up with was Says Who? And it was going to be a photo of Shammy, my beautiful soul mate, Cockapoo. And the book was going to be written by her. And it was going to be a self-help for the kid in all of us about her journey to be a mermaid and a surfer, even though the world said she could not. Hmm. And this was a way to help people see beyond their limiting messages that it's just conditioning because we actually see something we want and then we immediately come up with reasons in our head why we can't do it. That's the way we're conditioned. Oh, can't do it because of this. I'm not this. I'm not that. And yeah. when we stop and go, wow, is it true? And says who? You know, the first scary part is says who is now us. Because those messages get inside. When you hear them over and over, you know, you ask five-year-olds, who can sing? Everybody's hand goes up. Mm -hmm. Seven-year-olds, who can sing? There's a few hands not up because people have heard <laughs> they're not any good. Mm -hmm. And that stuff gets in us as we grow up. So it was a way of helping people with humor, because it's kind of written like Dr. Seuss, um, to help them simplify life and find their truth. And I had to write it in four days because I called somebody when I decided to do it and I went, oh, hey, you're a, a, like a writing coach. Um, how, do, how do I, what do I need to do for a book? And like, do you have an editor I can have help me? And um, when do I, when would I have to have it in? And so she said, well, when do you want to release? I go, it's got to be done less than 90 days. She calls me later and she goes, okay, choose a date. I open up the calendar and April 21st would have been just under 90 days. And it happened to be National Take a Chance Day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, people can take a chance on themselves. Mm -hmm. So I want to go with that one. So I chose that date. And then I wrote the book. We got it to the ed I worked with her editor that weekend, and we turned it in Monday to start getting printed. It ended up being two books in one, which they don't have any classification for. for. One for kids, and you flip it upside down and backwards for adults because we all have a kid inside, but we forget mm -hmm. about it as we grow up and get conditioned. And we can all flip our life back anytime we want. That's right. So That's right. It, can re it can be read by anybody. Kids, I have kids who read the adult version also. But one day during that journey, because then I was, I was doing all the technical parts with getting it out through the publisher and all of that, and I self-published. And one day I woke up and I went, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be awesome if like I wrote a song with a similar message? Mm -hmm. And so first I was going to like, I thought, I'll record it to a Beatles tune. That'll be easy. And well, then I found out about the whole copyright thing and I went, oh, okay, not that. And I just put it on hold. I went, it'll come to me what to do next. And then the next day I went, well, why can't I write the words in the melody? And so I did that. And friends were going, well, who's going to sing it? And I'm like, well, me. And they go, well, don't you want like a real singer? And I'm going, no, because I want people to see that they can do it too. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a certain way. So I, I looked and I found I had to go to a recording studio. I called and you know, what do you know? I got all this. Somebody goes, oh my gosh, I love your message. I would love to work with you. And Courtney and I worked together on it. And I actually had a guy help me with the backup on it. And it got released in 65 days from then. And it wasn't without challenges. But during that one, I didn't try to stick my hands on the wheel and get in the way very much. I just kind of went with the flow instead of fighting things that came up like... Mm -hmm. Like with the book, when it came up, well, you have to have a number and you have to pick an age. And I was livid. I'm like, maybe we need to change the system. And with the book, I just kind of went with the flow. It flowed out. And I got to tell you, both with the book and the song, mm -hmm. when I first held the book in my hand and when I listened to the song, I said exactly like what my friends said. Who actually, who sang it? And, and who wrote that song? I'm like, I told you what I did. They're going, I know, I know. But like, who did you get to sing it in the end? Because I looked at that and I, I still sometimes I, it'll pop on my up out of my phone out of nowhere. And I'm like, 
holy shit, I guess, you know, that really is me. But it's not me. For me, it's like God in the universe going, this is going to go in the world and it's going to go through you. And so it was that dance with that greater energy that I got to experience on that journey. And the journey showed me how I can help other people to do it by not trying to control it all, by trusting their intuition. And a big part of that was playing in that space of knowing it's all just thought. Because when we know it's just thought, and we let the thoughts flow, we can take those thoughts that go, oh, stop, you can't write a book. No, you're not going to write a song. You're not good enough. You don't know how to do it. Hmm. We can just let it go on through because it doesn't belong to us. And then we can just laugh at ourselves and go, well, I'm just human. There I am overthinking it again. (laughs) Taking in that stuff and digging the hole. (laughs) And we can learn to laugh at ourselves because there's not enough fun and joy and play for us. We think that comes later. Even the business owners are like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. First tell me how I build the business and then I'll get the better life after. And it's like, if you get a better life, starting today on the way your business will do better it just happens that way it works like that Hmm. that's right so that was kind of my my book and song journey and it was just such an incredible experience oh my gosh i absolutely loved it all right kathy so with you being the uh, ultimate entrepreneur and um it's super easy to start a business in these days so i don't know why people don't start more businesses but with that too uh uh, technology is always changing is always shifting you know um how do you keep up with the new emerging technologies and how do you assess and get to understand their usefulness um for your service range Well, I keep up with technology by staying connected with people who are leaders in technology. And I learn a lot about it because in today's world, we can get any information that just leaked out or is going to come out that we need on Google. Mm -hmm. Because when you set your vision on something, then the how comes to you. And the how isn't what's stopping the people it really they're stopping themselves with their thinking about how i talked about our thoughts create our reality they're taught they're thinking about oh well i didn't do this before or oh i tried a business it didn't work i can't take this crazy idea oh nobody's gonna like it nobody's gonna buy my stuff Because when you get on there, you can see, oh, Instagram's shifting, the algorithm's moving. These are the things people are going to be looking for. And the big thing to connect business owners to is that, one, you know, when you create a better life on the way for you, that means you're doing something that you are passionate about. The old phrase of do what you love and and love what you do is really part of it is if you believe that what you're doing has value in the world, you spend way less time worried about, oh, what about me? Am, am I really good enough for this? You worry less about you because the big disconnect in business with people is what part of you is your business and what part is not? What part of you does your business need And what part does your business need you to get out of the way and just look at the business as what it is? This is something needed in the world. It's highly valuable and I am the one bringing it. It's way easier to believe in that for people and not stop and question themselves, which is where they get trapped in the old stories and the meaning of it. And the technology piece really comes down to The way I have created 99% of my clients Mm -hmm. is I have connected with them. It's all about connection. Because I help the business owners. I'm going to connect you to who you really are. I'm going to connect you to your people. And I'm going to connect you to others in the world. Because 
that connection, whether you do it over social media or whether you do it in person, I prefer in person the best, but with technology, you can Skype. You can Instagram chat in person. You can, I mean, it's, the technology is there to get yourself in front of people who will learn to know, love, and trust you. Because when they know, love, and trust you, and they see value, and they see for themselves how something works for people, it's easy to connect with them, with your business in that way. Yeah. When you haven't built a relationship with someone at all, it won't work. We have a lot of, um, there's a, a part of a signature system that I'm putting out that is about um, sort of redefining networking because a lot of the networking meetings in the business world are ones where you go, everybody hands you a card and says, here, I need you to do business with me and send me these people. This is what I do. Hmm. That's kind of the end of where that ends that relationship with people yeah and when we create connection among people and community among people those are people that will want more of our business and we do it by serving um so we don't do it as much you have to get in it i did not really want to get into keeping up with technology or even doing technology because i didn't understand it and it wasn't easy for me but when I remembered that I have access to infinite genius, so people who built this stuff, people who are transforming the internet and the way it works for people and the technology we have to use, when we're all connected, we all have that same mind and we all have the greater energy mind. So if I have access to that mind, why am I hesitating with this? Why don't I just sit down and do it? And so I sat down and did it and I was like, Oh, I like writing my stuff like this. I like connecting with people this way. Mm -hmm. And it, because for me, and that, that's only me, there are people who do business just to do business and to create money. I think even then they've got to be connected to people. But when you're doing it with something that you know can serve other people, it's much easier to make that connection. And for me, I was seeing technology with my past stories of something that wasn't really connecting people. And it takes longer to build a connection when you're not in person with people. But I keep up with it by reading information, looking what tools are available, getting, uh, working with people who I call and say, hey, this just came out, can you teach me how to use it? I don't hesitate to do that because there are people who are experts in that stuff. A lot of what I do because it's mind work, it's not it's not mindset because we don't have to work on our mind. We have to learn how the mind works. Mm. And when we learn how the mind works, we realize that we don't have to do anything about it. But we do have to stay out of the way of doing something about it and only attach to the thoughts we want. So I'm creating a resource bank of people who have all the how-to knowledge for any technology or service that business owners might need. And I interview them, I talk to them, I find out what they do, I find out how they do it. And then I can give people a list. Oh, hey, here's four people who could help you with that. They all do it a little bit differently. Connect with them and see what resonates with you. That's right. All right. And Kathy, we know coaching is a powerful self-improvement tool uh, to positively change your life. The, these are coaching sessions for people completely focused on who you are now and who you want to be. So tell us how important is it for anyone to understand who they are versus who they want to become. To me, it seems the becoming part is the end goal. And I could be wrong, um, you know, considering oh, I was only on this planet for 36 years of, you know, life experiences and soul choices that pretty much tell me who I am as I look into the mirror. But you are the expert here. Set the record straight. Um, tell us about it, you know, uh, from your point of view. Okay. And, and truly, yeah, that was a great question. And this is my point of view and what I have learned in my years. The mirror tells us who we are, yes and no. It tells us who we are given our thought in that moment. In one moment in time, we can look in the mirror 
and we're too fat, too ugly, too different, too shy, too loud. We suck and we're a failure. In another moment, we might look in the same mirror and we're awesome. We can bench press an elephant. Our body's fabulous. We never fail and we're a rock star. So what reflects back to us is a reflection of where we happen to be in thought right there in that moment. We only experience thought in the moment. So yes, to set the record straight, we think we are who we are right then. Full stop, that's all we need to know about it. And it's subject to change moment by moment. So why do I say this? Because we live in the experience of our thinking. Our thoughts don't belong to us. They aren't ours. They come in our head. We think they're ours. We take them in and we become them. And they become our thinking and overthinking when we attach to them or we try to change them. I'm going to call in the thought police. Let's get those suckers out of my head. Mm -hmm. All of those things give it energy. And they're a fight for us. They're a struggle. When we learn to, as I say, flow and go, it just goes. And the idea of self-improvement, kind of for me, even that word implies that we must constantly improve to be okay. Yeah. And really, we are okay where we are. We, we are all where we are, perfect for the moment. But if people think they need to improve, they're going to oftentimes pick up if you go in, in stores and look at what audibles are out there. Mm -hmm. Millions of books with ideas about how technique and strategy are going to fix you. And that sucks us up into a myth that we have to do something to be someone, that there's something wrong with us, that we need to fix ourselves to be enough, to be worthy and better, and that doing it all yourself, the old empowerment, means you are strong. And it's all a myth. It's BS. Yeah. But we are so conditioned we don't see it until we step back Take a look at who we truly are, what our true nature is. And I say that with a capital T. What is true for everyone? Everyone. And how life really works until we can do that. And we get caught up in that mirror when we look and we think we know who we are based on what we see with our current thinking. And usually what's reflected back is lacking in some ways. We allow, at all times, our past stories, experiences, and meanings to tell us who we are today. We may have been shy one day as a kid. We're probably still living that because we still think it, not because it happened to us. Circumstances happen outside of us. We live from the inside out. The only way we can experience these stories is by spending time thinking about them. And yeah. many people spend years digging into that, reliving the old stories as a way of letting them go. And for some people, this works great. But as soon as you see that even our past can only continue to be experienced by a thought that we take in, and that our feelings, emotions, and everything are tied into that thinking, and we know we don't have to take it in, those old stories disappear. They no longer have to impact our life. And yet, they have continued to impact our life since we had them and experienced them. We all carry that around. We give ourselves personalities. We give ourselves things that we say, oh, this is me, so I got to do it like that. What if it's not? What if it's just your thinking it's you? What if it's not true? It doesn't take years to change because we don't need to be fixed. We are a perfect system. 
-hmm. There was a kindness in the way we were designed by the Creator. All we have to do is get out of our own way and allow thought to flow as it does. It takes one insight for someone into their thought for all the stories and meaning, including who they think they are. One insight, and they can be unstuck, and that shifts because they see they don't need to be fixed. There's nothing wrong with them. And that is one of the benefits of coaching with me and people who coach like me, mm-hmm. is to help you to have an insight for yourself. Because I can have insights all day. I can explain it to you, and you're going to understand the theory. And that can help you be like, oh, okay, so I do it like this. No, but you don't do it like that. You never do me. You do you. And if you see it for yourself, everything changes in that moment you know. You know those moments where you just go, oh, wow. And then all of a sudden, whatever you were thinking about before isn't a problem. That is where you know. Um, One other thing about that question As for goals, I work with people on what I call goals, projects, and impossible. And impossible is where we can do what we think we cannot, and the most personal growth occurs. Because anyone can make a goal for a time and get there with what they currently think and see. I did it. I did it all my life. I never did not make a goal until just a couple of years ago when I kept pushing that limit past what I thought I had any idea about to see if I could do it. And if we push ourselves hard enough, we can make a goal. But willpower has a half-life. Walk in a gym right now. It's only February. There's less people than there were in January because they were making themselves go. And forcing yourself to do something that is not in your true nature is not going to go with the flow and bring you the infinite wisdom of the ages and the universe to co-create what you really want at the end of that. What people set as goals is normally a means to an end. They're setting goals that are means, and 99% of the goals we set are something we think we can get. So we're not stretching outside of what we can create on our own given enough hard work, given enough push, 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 till you break. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't come with any joy along the way. It comes with struggle and stress and overwhelm. And just the thought of a goal, I have a goal setting workshop coming up called Soul Setting. Because when you have a goal that sets your soul on fire, it's not hard work. It's easy. And I never look at a goal as a place to get to. Like someone sets a goal of, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Okay, now they want to figure it all out. Okay, I have to lose five pounds a week for four weeks, or I could lose two and a half for 10 weeks. I got to not eat because we look on that side of things, what we aren't going to be able to do. I got to not eat these things. I got to not eat that. I got to not eat this. It starts to feel pretty heavy and filled with a lack of something food in that case it's like the feeling we get from it doesn't make you want to get up every day and get your butt out of bed and to the gym that's for sure Mm -hmm. but if the goal became a place to come from oh my gosh I can so see myself when I'm 20 pounds lighter I'm going to be able to play basketball again and be much faster than I am now I'm going to have more fun playing basketball Because I'll be able to run around longer. That will get you out of bed. And you'll just go and do what you know to do. Because when it's a little bit past what you can do, or even when it's something that you know you could do if you put in the time and energy, when you look at it as a place to come from, you're already there. Because the same power of thought that we bring the old stories forward with works when you imagine your future. Problem is, most of the time when we imagine our future, we imagine a future we don't want to have and then we're living today to create and make sure that doesn't happen to us. And if you imagine a future you want to have, 
you can be, you talked about superhero. I put the red tape on people in breast cancer recovery groups all the time. And they talk about how light they feel and oh my gosh, they don't look at it anymore as like a diagnosis is a prognosis. And it's like, you feel alive, you come alive with that. Because you can imagine yourself in the red cape and shoes. It worked when you were a kid and that shit still works today. So yeah, you're, you're kind of tweaking a perfect system that's gonna self-correct along the way. But I got to say, it sure is a lot more fun to imagine that kind of a future. And it will get you to the goal of what you really want. Because people come in like everyone thinks they want something. And really, they want something much more than that, that they can get on the journey. You talked about the journey to do. We talked about the journey doing the impossible thing. The journey is where the joy is. The life while you're creating the business is the life you love. And when you love the life, you're creating a better business filled with love. So true life changes come through insight. When you really see what's true for you, when you see for yourself that you were enough the day you came into life here on earth and that you have everything you need to be you, you will get what you need for circumstances in the moment. You step into bold, confident, courageous, connected you. And you guys, I have coached people. I coached a woman in her 20s who came in with major anxiety attacks every day. Her biggest fear was that she would live a life. She was predicting a future, live a life till she was 80, and then would die a horrible death because she has seen relatives die that way. Hmm. Now... That was going to be 60 years of carrying that thought that, oh my gosh, I'm going to die this horrible death. And when we allow any of those thoughts to stick about something bad that's going to happen, what am I going to do if this happens? Well, you'll do what you know to do then because you can't know now. You don't need it. If we were given everything we needed, if she was given everything she needed to live the next 60 years in her head, it's kind of like my coach Michael Neal talks about it in this kind of metaphor, and I love it. He goes, we don't need to go and keep buying more hard drives for our computer if we have unlimited internet access. So trying to store all of the how-tos. How am I going to do it? What's plan A, B, and C? I know I used to plan for plan A, B, and C, and then I went on my knowing, which was like plan E that I never thought of. Hmm. But I wanted to have those planned out just in case. And we spend a lot of time on that. And time, energy, and money are three things people really want to have more of. But yeah, we spend a lot of time planning for that. This lady was going to be planning for 60 years before we connected about how she was going to live then, assuming it was going to happen. And we don't know. Granted, it would be nice if we knew, like, well, what is my future going to look like? We just don't know. And that's part of why I love being in the ocean, why I love, I take people out surfing locally as part of coaching and I'm planning to build some retreats in other places to take people because part of the ocean is, one, it's about being present. Two, it's about getting comfortable in what you don't know. Comfort in the unknown. Just knowing in faith and trust that you're going to get what you need when you need it makes it so much more comfortable to not know what's in the unknown. And you don't have it inside your head now. So you don't have to figure it out. Part of the issue with redefining empowerment that I talked about was letting go of control. Mm -hmm. You know, they they told us we had to control it all. And as women, boy, we have the DNA to not just control, but boy, we're going to fix everybody too. The way we think they need to be fixed. We're going to control it all. And Oh my gosh, so much responsibility and stress over is everyone else going to be okay goes when we realize we don't have to control it all and figure it all out. Like 
that part is done for us. We can focus on what we can control and what we can do. And another one of the, the people that I love as a coach is Byron Katie, and she talks about at one point like there's our, my business, your business, and God's business. And if you're busy running everybody else's business, who's running your own? <laughs> That's right. So it's kind of funny that we, we do, we get caught up in that. And especially as women, we're like, yeah, I got to go out there and I got to fix all these things. And, you know, what was the old saying? And, and for women and men, it's true. It, you know, if it's to be, it's up to me. That was what we thought. Granted, the, some of the younger people don't get that, but I still see it. I still see it in people in their 30s nowadays. And... It's kind of something that we need to change, I think, just because it's creating something that we don't need to create. It's kind of like stress. If we realize that we don't have to create the stress, then we don't have to find a way to deal with it. We just don't create it. That's right. All right. All right. I, another... I don't know if I answered all the questions. Yeah, yeah, you did. I got another one for you, though. Um Okay. So when a client signs on with you, what are the most important issues that you cover first through, uh, you know, uh, I guess the natural coaching progression? Okay. One of the first things I cover is to help them see where they are and have them get okay in that space and then see where they truly want to be. Then we begin on work on understanding the science of the mind and helping them by pointing them in a direction where they can see that at play in themselves and powerfully notice and become aware that their thinking creates their feelings and that creates their experience of their life. But that it starts with a thought, the thoughts don't belong to them and they don't have to do anything about it to allow them to go away. When they're able to see that, then we go deeper into having them see what's true for them and how life is already working. I watch the things that they come in with, such as stress, anxiety, lack of connecting with clients, like not, not even stress them out they start taking action every day. They move towards their goals in ways that they hadn't thought of or seen before. And they just have a lighter attitude and an aliveness about them. So that is the process that I follow. It's connect, it connects them to who they truly are connect them to others, connect them to the world. And in business, it really takes a look at what about your business is and is not about you because we cannot think or see different until we realize we're creating what we are creating now by thinking and seeing what we see. A lot of people don't think they can create anything. When we talk about creating my gosh you know we with mind consciousness and thought we create our life we get to create our life all the time and that's like the most creative thing there could be so creating money creating clients creating anything that is made of that energy creating something in the world of form that we haven't created yet really is just part of the natural progression of realizing what we can do and as people work through the fears and gain confidence because people have a lot a lack of confidence especially in something they haven't done before we talked about technology at one point when people haven't dealt with technology oh no i don't want to deal with that that's like too big of a thing and certainly you get on there and there's like 500 videos made about on youtube about how you could do it right yeah. and and that can be an overwhelming like, whoa, like which one am I going to even sit down and try to begin and look at? But that goes back to more of those those myths created under under just our conditioning that's limiting us. And we have the thinking that 
you know, we got to be good at something or we're not willing to do it. And uh, there's a chapter in my book on this. And it's because you don't go do something when you're already confident and have skill. Mm -hmm. You get confidence and skill as a result. They aren't a requirement. But yet we're conditioned that, oh, you're not good, you suck, don't do it. And then we get that, like, I suck at this. And then, then you look around and now it's like people will say, no, no, you're really good at it. And you're like, wait, but I've never done it. I'm, I'm not going to be good but when I've never done anything. But when I sit down and I just take it as, oh, this is part of my business. It's going to help me get to my big vision. Okay, let me just sit down, look at a video and figure it out. Anything is figure outable. Anything. But coming to it, thinking that we need to understand how to do this before we do it, we don't. We don't know. And we don't need to know. And we get the knowing by doing. And when we're in action, we call in all that extra energy in the world and go, okay, moving this way, everybody on board. <laughs> Because the universe is just waiting to deliver all of these things to us. But we're so busy in our head that we're not available. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. All right. So um, are there any parts of what you do as far as like coaching, teaching, motivating, inspiring millions um, that you feel a stronger connection with than other parts of maybe uh, a part of your service that you offer I think the thing I like most is it's not gonna this is not gonna sound right <laughs> is that I'm really connected to the connection piece <laughs> mm. because I believe connection is so needed in our world mm -hmm. connection to our truth connection to who we are connection to how life works and all of life infinite and form is connected together and if more people in the world could see the pieces for themselves I really think that it would move us towards that one solution that can solve everything and that's love when people fall in love with themselves when they fall in love with their business when they fall in love with everything in life every human everything they see in nature every pet every animal it's all life when they can fall in love with that and be engaged with it and show up in love everything shifts there's even like this year, I've heard a lot of people saying, oh yeah, it's the, the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote, you know, and yet women are still making less money, women are still this, women are still that. And yeah, I agree, that sucks. And it's not right, it's not in my mind, it's not the way that we work together. But we can't go about that just in a fight also, because what if, the one solution to that was to help everyone, including the people like who can pass the ERA bill that's coming up again. Mm -hmm. What if they could all see that we're all connected, that we're all the same on the inside, that there's no difference, no matter who the people are, no matter what they look like, no matter where they live, no matter what they're doing. What if they could see that? Yeah. Might they then not worry about like one individual group there's a lot of people that are treated less than the way god intended us to treat each other it's not just women it's not just any group of any any difference that divides people but right. we're looking at the divide all the time not at the connection together yeah you're right. Absolutely right. Um, and that, that connection piece is the most important to me as well. Kathy, what's the most meaningful advice you've ever been given when it comes to uh, your life? Like, where did it come from? What was said? Why did it stand out more than anything else uh, other people have said before? What made it credible to you? 
I think what stands out the most in terms of the most recent, what came to me was within the past year when my coach who, he studied every type of science of the mind for years and years and years, like 35 years and is really well versed in it. And I just knew what I knew from experience and from what I studied. I studied like neuro-linguistic programming and those kind of things, so I knew some of it. But when he said, and it's funny, you said this at the beginning yourself, <laughs> we think we have a reality problem, but what we have is a thinking problem. And that's great news because of how thought works. And I have found that to be the most meaningful for me because when I'm able to help people think differently just about who they are and who they become on that journey, they actually create a whole new reality around them. One of the first things people say to me sometimes is, oh my gosh, can you help me change my husband? And I say, yeah, we can do it. I said, we'll play the change your husband game. I say, and he doesn't need to play. He doesn't even need to know you're playing. And within a couple of weeks, they go, oh my gosh, he's like a totally different person. And I tell them, I go, wow. I say, and you've created that just by you stepping into you. And it works like that. It's like reality shift. Because our reality, our experience is, is small T true. Big T true is who we really are. And when we connect to that, then small T truth changes and the reality looks different. And they come up with the craziest things. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. He must be doing all this like self-help work and not telling me about it. He even looks different. <laughs> right. And I just, I get such a kick out of that. So him, my coach saying that and helping me to see that it's really true has been so meaningful. And it just strikes me as, as one of the things concerning my life, my recent life, that I've seen that it goes back to from the time I was a kid because the meaningful advice I would have to say at the youngest age was kind of like, these aren't going to be the words my parents used, but it was like kind of like, yeah, shit happens, figure it out. It was yeah, like, yeah. hop in the pool with no swimmies, you'll learn how to swim. And, you know, it, it could be looked at as a bad thing, but somehow I was able, like, from that time on to turn off the thinking that told me I couldn't do things because I had to do it for survival. And then I just kept doing it and I didn't listen to the thinking. And I was like, I don't know why it doesn't bother me that I'm told that. And I even tell myself that sometimes. So I'm like, yeah, let that shit go. Mm -hmm. But I know, like, people always said, how, how are you so positive all the time? Like, it's not like you have a totally pink, fluffy life, but you act like it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how I do it. And I didn't know. And that fact that what we have is a thinking problem and not a reality problem just really, like, kind of brought home how my whole life in those two pieces that were probably 60 years apart came together Yeah. in a, a big awe. Oh my gosh. Like that is it. Hmm. Most definitely. All right. Well, Kathy, what I want to do next is play your song, uh, says who, and, uh, and then come back after that. How would you like? Okay. That? Demetrius. <laughs> That would right. be wonderful. All right. Thank All right, you. guys, you're in for a treat. Here's Kathy Murphy with her song, Says Who. We'll be right back. Take a chance on you today.
piece of music that was says who by Kathy Murphy man I'm in awe like I was just imagining myself just you know I don't know uh, the message just in, in the particular passage it says who you know wow I don't, I don't even want to mess up the song I mean this song is incredible as it is uh, there's copies of the link, I mean not copies of the link. There's links to, you know, that particular record if you want that. Uh, I'm sure you do, but click the link and it'll take you right to it. Uh, and share this record with your friends and your family. Anyone who is struggling with, um, you know, being a part of the crowd that has to sway with, um, I guess the perception of the world of society and you know thinking that we can't when we can or where you want when you will you know so yeah share the song share the song all right i want you guys to also in the meantime not only share that incredible song but um to start small because it is where everyone starts it is where every achievement starts as a small fragile thought and anyone can start small that is the beauty of true success it doesn't have to be grand or magnificent in the beginning in fact it cannot be start small and then keep going 
keep growing, keep learning and adding to your achievements. Success is attained not by those who start big, but by those who maintain their momentum long enough to get big. Every single day counts. Every moment counts. You can allow them to work against you or you can make them work for you. I like that part better. Work Working for me. Oh, yeah. I can definitely dig that. So where do you want to go? What small thing can you do right now to uh, get you started? It may be even going on Google and, and just two to three minutes researching that idea that's banging you upside your head that you've been thinking about for years. All it takes is a few minutes to research on Google. That's the beauty of this century that we live in right now. You don't have to wait until 8 or 9 o'clock to visit your local library. You have a library right on your phone. Oh, my goodness. That is so awesome, right? Yeah. You can get started right now, right in this instance, even in your pajamas, uh, whatever. You can use Siri. Hey, Siri, look up. Da, 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 da. And there you go. You can be taking a shower. Oh, my goodness. Wow, multitasking. You're amazing. Right, yeah. So get started right now. There is no excuse. The most stunning achievements you could possibly imagine each begin with a small thought, an idea, a desire to make a difference. Take this podcast. It it started out as a small thing in the back of my head because I deal with... uh, speaking in public and with anxiety and of people what people may think of me or my voice or uh, i i even have a list um an impediment you know all these negative things that i would think are negative working against me but uh six years now and you're, we're still not as big as we want but we are so much far along than the first day the first episode with only one listener say what Danny? yeah i had one listener for months It's like, why did you keep doing it? Because my idea was bigger than the moment at that time. And now we cater to over 30,000, 37,000 to be exact, live listeners, you know? So if I did it, a kid with a bad uh, speech impediment, you know, who's afraid, who's anxious and deals with anxiety, so can you, so can you. I'm I'm no better than you are. Just an average Joe with an idea. A small idea at that. So don't think your idea is mundane or wouldn't matter in this world. You never know what your purpose is, who you are supposed to minister to, who you're supposed to touch, um, who's watching you. You never know. So you got to do what uh, your purpose is because it's way bigger than you. And that's how it starts, right? So what is your thought? What is your idea? Your desire? Follow it and keep nurturing it until it is real. That's right. It may not be real right now. You may be still doing the nine to five thing. I was for a very long time helping someone else's dreams uh, live on while, while my own dreams were sitting in the corner. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's life, but uh, when you wake up and when you're fed up of having to be somewhere at a certain time or having to dress this way and uh, it's not serving your purpose, of course it's paying bills, but it's not serving your true purpose and you're feeling like a caged bird, well, Denny is saying, break that cage, get started, get frustrated, you know, and when, once you're frustrated, you do something about it, right? Right, I know. My girlfriend tells me all the time, she's frustrated, oh boy, watch out, she's going to do something about that, and usually that something is me, so I play nice and I do whatever she wants, no problems, all right, so yeah, keep on nurturing that dream, keep on stacking or researching, building up and building up and building up until it is real, just don't say I need all of this just to get started, you don't. All you need is your idea and a few plans and take a leap of faith. Um, Planning is cool for some people and sometimes just stepping out there is cool for others. You know, the adventurous type. Do what's best for your personality, not what everyone else is carving out for you to do. No, your path is your path. Your timeline is your timeline. And when you get there, you'll get there. And we'll all celebrate with you and not try to hinder you. Okay, so follow it. 
nurture it till it is real. It may be small now, but only you can make it big. Take it from me, Dini Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bond. Before right now, let's bring back the woman of the moment, Kathy Murphy. You're back live with us. Hi. Hi. Hi to everybody. Thank you for listening, and it's so right on what he says. It's one step. That's all we ever have to take at any time, no matter what it is. One step. Show up for one step. Most definitely. I All loved right. how you you put that together. And I have to tell you, you just you have an amazing show. I had Thank such you. a good time hanging with you on your show and being part of it. I'm honored to be able to be here with you. And I can't wait to share with people what you're doing and bring some more people into your world that can help Thank other you. people too. It's just Thank you so much. It's a connected thing for everyone. Yes. Yes, indeed. Definitely. Well, Kathy, I want to uh, sincerely thank you uh, for all the inspiration that you bring uh, to the world, to the people in your community, uh, your coaching. I- I've been watching your videos and uh, your Instagram and everything that you've been doing, and it's very incredible to see a light worker doing her purpose, living out your dreams and inspiring others to follow theirs and, you know, structure their lives how they want it to be structured so definitely hats off to you yeah thank you yeah you guys you guys all got this we're all in it together and we're all rising that's that's most definitely correct so kathy uh let all of our listeners know where they can um connect with you online okay awesome so you guys can connect with me on instagram at we are rising tides because we are all rising tides and together we rise even more my website um it was just morphed into this one so there's not much on it but there is something on it and it's we are rising tides.com you can reach me in either of those two places i'm also on facebook but I do a lot more on Instagram than anywhere else. So I would love to see you in there and follow you and what you're doing. I'm there to help however you guys need it. If you need to connect and chat through Instagram chat, I'm open for that. Um, keep listening to your rock star man here at his <laughs> radio station because he's got great stuff for you that's going to inspire you and keep you moving and maybe you can find some of my stuff that will do that for you on Instagram as well most definitely I'm sure they will and guys I will have those links in the uh, description of this episode so all you have to do is click the links and they'll take you right to her Instagram and website and all those wonderful things Kathy Murphy yeah truly again I want to thank you so much uh, for being our guest thank you pleasure was mine to be able to be there and hang with you thank you thank you enjoy your night all right you two have a wonderful evening thank you my vigilantes family as always for checking out my podcast over here at vigilantes radio all episodes are available for free download and you can grab that from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube any app that's on a Google Play or iTunes store or our website. And that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play, email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. If it's music, please label it by artist and title. Here's my disclaimer. We are genre free. We do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay, but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show. So deal with it. <laughs> nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is Airing. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace.
and have a good night. And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a seventh sign regime, Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate exclusive.